All right, howdy, folks. Howdy. I'm Black Dragon. Welcome to Black Dragon Biker TV. This is the Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News you can trust. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. Uh, I don't know. Is this, what is this? Tuesday. Tuesday. This is Tuesday. This is uh, Black Dragon MC Protocol, MC Protocol and Bike Night Tuesday. Tuesday nights at the Black Dragon's Lair. Right here, my own personal uh, uh, motorcycle clubhouse, 3393 Lawrenceville Highway, Tucker, Georgia, 30084 Building 2, behind the furniture store, across from the U storage, down the hill, behind the gate in the cut. Come out and check us out. We uh, have uh, MC Protocol talks from 6 to 7.30, and then after that is bike night. So come check us out at MC Protocol and bike night Tuesday. Here at the Dragon's Lair, man. Yes, yes, yes. Man, outstanding. It's good to see you all. Uh, let's see. Get into this first story here. And I'll tell you this. It used to be that if you wanted to see, or if, if you were going to be able to see two major clubs get down, in a negative way. You you would have to be in some elite company somewhere. This is just, just not something that you used to be able to see on the street. But now, it seems all you got to do is be uh, walking around in the uh, festival somewhere. And you see what used to happen only in uh, very, you know, clandestine places. Clubs didn't used to, you know, when I was coming up 100 years ago, clubs didn't used to handle their business in public. Here was a post off of um, the Outlaw Archive, which has since disappeared, but it, it was up there. Uh, and as soon as it was up there, everybody sent it to me. A group of New York City Hells Angels at the Indian Larry block party yesterday beating a guy up for making social media posts. It wasn't me. Now, I, I don't know the, the truth or anything about that, uh, if that's true or not. It's just uh, what the post said. And then it shows a guy laying on the ground uh, after having been pummeled. So first thing I wanted to know is what on earth is the uh, Indian Larry block party? So we come over here and find out a little bit about it. Indian Larry is this guy who has since passed away. He was born and raised New Yorker who discovered his passion for mechanics at a very early age. He drew inspiration from motorcycle clubs of the 50s and 60s. Artist Ed Big Daddy Roth and clothing designer Von Dutch, all these people. Larry was a skilled machinist, metal sculptor, and master motorcycle mechanic who developed his own signature style and blend between classic choppers and hot rod race bikes. And uh, they, after he died, I guess in about 2004, yeah, passed away in 2004, they wanted to do something for him because he was a tremendous loss for the motorcycle industry. So they put together this wild party that I guess everybody goes to. And I, I think this was like the 20th one, something like that. So this is a black block, block party that everybody goes to. And... I guess it was at this point that we get this video here. And I put this video up, and it, it, it's funny. Uh, I, well, actually, I took it. It was, uh, it was already up all over the place. So uh, I, I snatched it down. Somebody sent it to me, and uh, I managed to go find out where it was and snatch it down. And I put it up on a couple of my platforms, and it immediately got blocked. So maybe that's why it's not on the Outlaw Archive anymore. So the only place that it was able to survive, as it were, I think was on my Black Dragon Biker TV Instagram channel. So I went back through, and I, I have um, blurred 
it so that it's not so um, so horrible. Uh, and maybe they w- will or maybe they won't take this down or demonetize or whatever. We've tried to blur it. So all these people call me up and say, they send me all this, and, and you know, it just comes in. Something like this hits, it, it's coming in. And the first thing is, well, what do you think about this? Nothing. I don't think, I don't think it's not, I don't think nothing about it. Uh, how two major clubs handle their business, I, I don't have any thoughts about that. Um, all those are big people. All those are grown folks. They handle their business how they handle their business. I, I do think it's kind of interesting that it would be handled in public with all these damn cell phones out here. This, is, this thing is stronger than the lunar lander, lunar lander computer. You remember the lunar lander that landed on like the Mars or something when I was a little boy? This is a stronger computer than that. It's got a damn near as good a camera as a Hasselblad. And you're not fixing to do nothing nowhere in public that somebody ain't doing this. And you don't, you don't know if they're filming you or not because they could just be looking at their phone <laughs> and filming you the whole time. You think they're looking at their phone. So I, I don't know why people get surprised when... It gets shared a thousand and one times. Nobody's dry snitching. The dry snitching is when that happened in public. It, it, it was like whoever was doing it didn't care. I think maybe the young folks. I, there's a couple things. The young folks don't be thinking, uh, which young folks never really do. And the old folks have lost all the power. I think that's why... We're seeing a lot of this stuff. But anyway, um, we'll get to the video here. So that was uh, that was it. Um, it looked like at some point they were trying to pull his vest off. I don't know if they got it or not. Um, it was um, quite uh, shocking. It was uh, violent, as those things can be. Um, and it was everything you might imagine. I don't have any answers. Where was his buddies or how did it happen? I, 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 don't, I have no idea. But um, it, uh, it is what it is. So that was that video, and it, it happened. And uh, I hope, like, I hope the, hope the guy is okay. Like, maybe, you know, just some bruises and stuff, and, and, you, uh, and you go on. I hope so. But I am glad. I am glad that nobody got shot, nobody got killed, no civilians got hurt. I'm glad about that. That's a, uh, that's a glad thing. So anyway, uh, that's the Indian Larry thing. If you're just now tuning in, you've already missed it. Uh, cycle back. Okay. Uh, let's see. New story. There was a shooting at a Detroit motorcycle club. Police seek persons of interest in the shooting at the Detroit Motorcycle Club. Police are looking for several people wanted for questioning in the August 19 non-fatal shooting that happened on Detroit's east side. According to authorities, individuals wanted, the individuals wanted are persons of interest in a shooting that took place in front of the Hellraisers Motorcycle Club located near the intersection of Bellevue Street and Vernor Highway. Police said they left the scene in what they believe 
is a silver Ford Explorer. There's pictures of it right here. Further details were not revealed at home. Of course, anyone who recognized the people or has any information is asked to contact the Detroit Police Department at 313-596-5700 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP because they don't get a lot of people speaking up on these sorts of things. Here's the video. Um, I hope they don't cut me out to a commercial, but we'll see if we can just get straight to the video. I queued it up, so maybe uh, maybe they'll let me have it. No, they won't. Hold on. A connection to the... Oh, and then when you try to stop it, they send you off to a website. These people are so uh, ingenious. Let me see. Okay, we can skip it. Here we go. It's quiet. There's no sound. You see a couple men up here talking. And then it looks like the guy pulls a gun on him. Now, at this time, if I'm still alive, I run. I don't just walk away still talking noise. What's there to stand, what's there to turn around and talk about? I'm like a whole football field away right here. It's time to keep on keeping on. It's, you got to run right here. I, I'm backing up with my hands up. If this guy's let me live this long, I'm out. It, what you still standing there for? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, and so the guy is going back over to him. Finally, uh, your boy walks off here. I don't know at what point the shooting occurred. It doesn't appear to be here on the video. But uh, um, anyway, so at some point, I guess a shooting occurred. So, uh, when I serve, oh my goodness. All right. So that's that one. <laughs> okay. So that's that story. So police are looking for him. Hey, listen, if they, if they, if they, they got the drop on you <laughs> and they let you, you know, kind of get away, keep on keeping on. I say, go on, on, get on, on. There's nothing to talk about. Certainly, I'll never forget the video where the one guy, that two guys had guns and they were talking noise. Did you guys ever see that video? So the one guy puts his gun down. Uh, I don't need a gun to talk noise to you. And the guy shoots him like two or three times. At least, and then he goes back and he tries to pick the gun up and he finishes him off. These, these are not the times to be bad. It's not the time to be tough here. I'm just... I'm just saying. In this uh, story here, it's a feel-good story. Uh, and LEMC, uh, they they have motorcycle clubs too. Uh, and LEMC here is um, doing uh, some great work. They donate over a thousand toys to the Children's Clinic in Tupelo. Let's check that out. Towns of Mississippi is a law enforcement motorcycle club with a big love for bikes, but a big Hades Hounds of Mississippi is a law enforcement motorcycle club with a big love for bikes, but a bigger love for charity. And today they made a huge donation to the Le Bonner Outpatient Clinic in Tupelo. WTV's Governor Montgomery is live there now. He's here to share how they help the Le Bonner kids out today. Patients here at Le Bonner always get a special treat every time they visit. Treats like this plush cookie monster. And they get to pick out a toy from the toy wall to take it home with them. And Hades Hounds set out to make sure that they'll never run out of toys, at least for a while. They drove up today in their bikes to drop off over 8,000 toys at this clinic. They had a donation drive in August where they got a bunch of toys and over $2,000 that they spent at Walmart buying toys. They got toys for all ages, so any child who comes to this clinic can pick up something that they will cherish when they get home. These visits can be really tough for these kids and their parents as well. So these toys are something that these kids can look forward to, and it also helps the parents get their kid to behave when they're going on a doctor visit. Le Bonner says this donation will have a huge impact. We have about 800 to 1,000 kids that come through the clinic a month that pick toys off. And, and we had gotten really low. August was a really busy month here um, with school starting back and illnesses kind of resurfacing. So it's been really huge for us to have this huge donation. To the general public, seeing a bunch of bikers in Walmart pushing buggies around buying toys is probably not something they don't see every day. But that's what we're about, giving back to the community and taking care especially of the kids. 
This is a very special day for La Bonner and the kids that come into this clinic. And if you want to make a kid's day, don't consider donating toys here. They would really appreciate it. I'm about to actually go donate this Cookie Monster back to the toy wall because I know there's probably some kid out there who will cherish this more than I will. Just a bit more. This is a lot of fun to use as a prop. Live in Tupelo, Gordon Montgomery, WTVA, 9 News. Have you ever been in a cold plunge? Recently, we attended... Yeah, okay. Uh, Hades, Hades Hounds, is that who they are? Hades Hounds, LEMC. Good job, man. Good job. Uh, thousand toys for kids, man. You you can't beat that. You can't beat that, man. That's all right. Uh, here's another feel-good story for you guys today. Uh, Motorcycle Club raises funds for former Clear Creek Township Officer Eric Ney. Uh, this is in Ohio. Uh, I guess that may be Xenia. Uh, the Miami Val Valley chapter of the Copperheads Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club held a motorcycle ride to raise money for the former Clear Creek Township police officer, Eric Nay. On July 12, 2022, Nay and his partner responded to a domestic violence call. Those They say those are like the worst calls to go to. Those, those calls are normally where you get messed up. You go to help the woman, you grab her husband, and she shoots you in the back, you know? But anyway. On July 12th, they went to a domestic uh, violence call when investigators say Mark Evers shot him in the head. Lord Jesus. Uh, Nay spent months, three months uh, in the hospital and has had multiple surgeries. It ended his 15-year law enforcement career, career and left him blind in one eye. Nay says he doesn't have much um, emotions since he was shot, so that it affected that part of his brain the part that has emotions. So he says he doesn't have much emotion since he was shot. I wish I did, but today it was probably good because I would have been crying all day. Just amazing what they did for me, and I'm so happy, Nay said. Nay says his memory is only at 13%, and it's hard for him to remember the day before, but he hopes to remember this fundraiser. Nay says the money raised will help towards his family's expenses. Uh, Nay says he appreciates the phone calls and letters he received. The club held a fundraiser ride last year as well for Richmond K-9 officer Sierra Burton. So uh, these guys are looking after their own, which is always an important thing. And, man, you cannot imagine. I can't imagine what it would be like to have only 13% of my memory. Your memory is everything. You're, you do everything for memories. Your memory is everything. And to only have 13% of it, does that mean you don't remember your childhood? Uh, or does that mean, you, did, is it the short-time memory or the long-time memory or both that are affected? And then the area of the brain that affects emotion, so you can't laugh, you can't cry. Uh, you, you probably feel very, very messed up that you know you're supposed to be feeling things that you don't feel anymore. Kind of like if you have diabetes and you stop feeling your feet um, and you know you're supposed to be feeling your feet. You know what I mean? Um, that, that sucks. There's something missing. So we absolutely appreciate, um, the service these guys give toward their community. And, uh, we hope that maybe he can get better, but glad to see those motorcycle clubs helping out folks. Final story of the day. <sighs> this one is tough and I can't really show it to you, show it to you. I can only show it to you a little bit here. So what we have is a cop who knocks some motor. Somebody sent me a video, this video, and they said, "Well, Black Dragon, what do you think?" And I think it's, I think it's atrocious. I think that, well, <laughs> let's look at it. So this, um, this police officer. Let me make it bigger for your cell phones. This police officer is chasing a guy who, uh, it says, Arkansas State Police putting a motor. Uh, putting a motorcycle that was doing 140 miles per hour. I think maybe they mean chasing a motorcycle that was doing 140 miles an hour. He put on quite a show for the dash cam. This is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, hashtags or GSP. So that, uh, that stands for, I believe, Georgia State Patrol. Let's see. Oh, no, Arkansas. So what is GSP? I thought that was Georgia State Patrol. Anyway, Arkansas Police. Let's get a look at this. Stand by. We're going to Georgia. Stand by. So for some reason, this motorcycle pulls in here, and maybe he sees that he can't go that way, so he tries to make a U-turn and come back out. 
or maybe he doesn't see the police officer at all and doesn't know he's chasing him. Because okay, stand by. Because when he comes out, he's not even looking at the officer. And here we go on. Right here, this officer hits this guy and knocks him about 25 feet down the road. I can't show you that. But you can hear. Okay, I'll do it. I'll stop it right here. So you can hear the hit. And he's just laying on the road there, but the motorcycle still sliding. Is that crazy? Now, the rest of this really makes you sick. Okay, here we go. I knocked him off his bike and he's unconscious. Now, what pisses me off about this is you're not a trained law, uh, you're not a trained emergency person. I used to, I used to do search and rescue and that sort of thing. And you're not supposed to touch this guy. You're not supposed to roll him over. You're not supposed to take his helmet off. He could have major back injuries right here. And to me, this is just like the, the hallmark of unprofessionalism. Ah. Oh. You don't turn him over. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You just tried to kill me. Relax. You just tried to kill me. What's he reaching back for? His handcuffs? Are you serious? Oh. Uh, my uh, producer said, <laughs> F around and find out. The cops ain't playing with these bikes no more. And in Kansas, they just got rid of the no chasing bike mandate. So I guess, I guess we're finding it. To be that he's he's right. I mean, maybe they get mad at, at all this. 140 miles an hour down the road, but I I can't believe he ran over the guy. Um, but yeah, he knocked him off his bike. Guy's laying on the ground. Wow, they'll knock you off your bike now. <laughs> Damn. Ah, uh, man. Maybe you should just pull over and get the ticket. Since they're knocking people off bikes, and my producer says they're they're starting to chase you again, so maybe I don't know, maybe just maybe. Uh, Hellfighter Steve, who's been watching us forever, it's been a long time uh, contributor to the show, says play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Wait a minute, I thought I was going to get some more sympathy from you guys out there. There's no sympathy for the poor guy. Let's see. <laughs> Ah, 12 is always looking to kill a biker when they get a chance. What is that? 12. What does 12 stand for? I don't know. Is that a cop thing? Uh, Goose says, no cop's fault. Um, uh, no cop, not, no, not a cop, not, not cop's fault. Guy came in front of the car. Well, I'm sure that's what they'll say. Uh, well, someone else says, Pretty sure using deadly force to pull someone over is aggravated assault. Not if you uh, are a police officer, you get this this thing called uh, blanket immunity or something. Uh, oh, 12 stands for one Adam 12. Boy, you are old as hell. You are old. Dude, you are old. I'm not even going to acknowledge that I know what one Adam 12. Oh, my God. This guy said one Adam 12. And then he said 12 like that's a... Like, like people should know. <laughs> uh, let's see. One out of 12. I'm trying to find it. Uh, is a LAPD call sign. That's a combination of three elements. The units patrol division. The type of patrol unit it is. And the daily assigned report district. One out of 12 also used to be a television show, man. Way back in the like 1960s. Yep, here it is right here. The 1960s. Uh, I used to watch it every day. 
one Adam 12, 1968 to 1975. Damn, it was on a long time. There you go. Please not be so old on my show, please. Adam 12, TV series, 1968 to 1975. It was a really, really good show. It was one of the first cop shows, man. That was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, that's our news for today, y'all. It's a pretty quick news day here today. And um, somebody said, <laughs> 12, BD, come on, man. <laughs> I didn't know what 12. I, hey, listen, I don't know everything, but between me and my subscribers, we know everything. So there you go. Oh, finally, someone. Yeah, the police were in the wrong and guarantee you he will face some type of suspension or firing after the biker sues the SHIT out of the department. Um, I think so, man. I think so. Back when TVs warmed up with a high-pitched scream that always gave you away when you snuck TV at night. Oh, my goodness. Do you remember getting beat like that? Somebody recalled chips. You're not as old if you know what chips were, but you are definitely old if you know what 1 Adam 12 meant. Hey, listen, guys. We have the Black Sabbath party this weekend. The Atlanta party. Let me try to find that flyer for you. We got the Black Sabbath Atlanta party coming up this weekend. And it is our 23rd anniversary here in Atlanta. And I'm telling you, man, we're going to have a lot of fun here in, in Atlanta. So if you're going to be here in Atlanta, the tickets are $15 at the door this weekend, Saturday night. And if you're not going to be here, but you want to support club, uh, just go ahead and, and send me $12, and I will send you your band out to you. But this is our 23rd anniversary. We're going to be, I know it says 22nd, but it's actually 23rd. And we're going to be at the Lindell's Event Center Saturday, September 23rd from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. at 2260 Lake Harbin Road. Morrow, Georgia, 3230260. So if you want a VIP table with a bottle, it's $50. And uh, if you just want to come hang out, it's $15 at the door or $10 in advance. If you know a Black Sabbath, get a ticket or get your band. And if you want to send one to me, uh, I will, at this point, I will have your band. We'll call if you send me. Um, $12 to dollar sign biker print. Actually, $10. I'll have your uh, band at will call. So it'll be uh, $10 since I can't mail any more out at dollar sign biker press. Dollar sign biker press. Host Hotel is a country and in suites down on Mount Zion Parkway. Now, the meet and greet is at uh, the East Coast Regional Clubhouse, which is 2439 Memorial Drive, Southeast. Atlanta, Georgia, and we will also be hanging out here at the Black Dragon's Lair, which is going to be at 3393 Lawrenceville Highway, Tucker, Georgia. Come in, hang out with us. If you want, I'll sign a book for you if you've already got my book and you've always wanted me to sign it. If you're going to be in town, come by and I will absolutely sign it for you. And tonight is our bike night here at the Dragon's Lair. I would love to see you here. It's MC Protocol and Bike Night. It starts at 6 o'clock to 7.30 is the MC Protocol. Bring your folks by, ask me any questions or whatever you want to talk about, and then from 7.30 on, it's a regular bike night, man. So come hang out here, man, with us, yeah. Okay, that's my story for tonight, for today. That's my news for today. Um, try to do better things out there, people, and, and remember that... The cameras are always out, and they're always watching. They're going to always be here from now on in some form or fashion. The tricorder is real. The tricorder is real. It's real, my man. The tricorder is real. The Star Trek tricorder is real. It's right here. All right? I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comment section below. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to do your testing today. Do your testing on your glucose meter. Test your blood sugar. 
test your uh, your 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 blood pressure and take your meds that you're supposed to take. Take your meds today. It's all important to keep yourself healthy, fit and wise. Take care of your eating, eat properly. Go out and do a walk today. Try to get your 10,000 steps in or 5,000 or 2,000 or 1,000. Just get it done. All right. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook, get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the motorcycle club nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book.